Hey guys, Jimo here again. Today I'm going to be doing one here by request how to polish a black car. And this one here, uh, it's your typical daily driver. Uh, it's got scratch, minor scratches through the whole thing. Um, there's a few deeper ones that are going to need a bit of wet sanding. For the most part, it's just going to be rubbing the powder on the whole car and getting her looking all pretty again. So let's get to Okay, so after you wash and dry the car, the first thing you'll want to do is uh, tape up all your trim pieces. That'll keep uh, the buffer from damaging anything. Splatter from getting inside the edges, which can be a pain to get out, especially if you don't have a pressure washer. So it will take 10 minutes to do that. Okay, so we got it all masked up here. Uh, the next step, you should go over it and look for any marks that'll rub off, uh, like this one right here. Some paint from something's rubbed up against it and if you get a little bit of paint thinner on a rag it should take it right off so you can find out what uh, you can remove with paint thinner and paint thinner will not damage the paint um, unlike some people might tell you the newer cars with the clear coat they use uh, the paint thinner will not affect it at all Okay, so nothing really jumped out of me that needed sanding, other than this one little scratch on the hood. So what I'm going to do is take some 2000, actually like 1500 grit paper here. You can use anything finer than 1200. The finer you use, the less uh, work you're going to need polishing it to bring the shine back after we're done sanding. So we have 1500 here wet. I'm just going to go over it real lightly here. Shouldn't take very long. You want to be careful on the edges because if you keep sanding really close to the edge and your paper's on the edge, it'll melt right through that edge before you know it. I think that's good there. done it'll have a dull hazy look to it so that's normal. Once we get to the next step of polishing it'll bring that shine back up real quick. Okay so we take care of that haze. First thing I got here is the uh, rubbing compound. I'm going to use a wool pad. I've taped that edge off there just to uh, kind of protect that edge so I don't burn through it with the power provider. And try to set it around about somewhere between 1500 and 2000 RPM. There's the one thing I don't like about the wall is it makes a big mess. But it does seem to cut quite a bit quicker. This will be the only part I'm going to use the wall. The rest will be the foam composite pad. This is a new pad too, so it's a bit messier than one that's been broken in. Actually, I'm going to go ahead actually and switch the composite now. Okay, so I'm just going to I'll go over the, the entire car now with uh, the same rubbing compound and the foam composite pad. Um, we'll do small seconds at a time and just make our way around the entire car. Again, the same speed, about 1500, 2000 RPM.
sometimes you spot these little scratches on the fly. Need a bit more sanding. That should do it. Okay, so I went over it now with the rubbing compound. Next thing you want to do is clean it all off. You don't want this compound to cross contaminate with the next one. The way polishing works is you keep moving to a finer and finer compound. So if there's any of the coarse compound left on it, then you're going to be polishing with that grit. It's not going to do exactly what you want. So if you have any compound that's kind of stuck on there, you can use a detailing spray. This one here is the 3M Clean and Clean and Shine. I'm going to spray that on there and it'll help remove it. So we'll go over the whole car and get all the compound off. Okay, so here's where we're at after we remove all the compound. You can see the gloss levels come up a bit. It's not anywhere close to where I want it to be yet. next step is going to be to go over it with some swirl mark remover. Now if you look at it right now, this is probably where about 90% of car dealerships and uh, used car lots would end their polishing and probably throw a coat of wax on it, which would hide any minor scratches that you'll see outside. And if we were to leave it just like this, um, once you get in the sun, it would have those blinding swirl marks all over it, uh, just be holograms all, all across the finish. And, be annoying, it'd be an eyesore, and it'd be no good. So let's get on to the next step. Okay, so we're on to the next step here. Um, pretty well doing the same thing, except now we got the black pad, which is a softer pad, and a finer compound, the swirl mark remover.
Okay, so I think I'm about three hours into this job now. So I went over the whole car with the swirl remover, and it's looking pretty good. The last thing I'm going to do is the, the uh, Altafina here, so it's the blue pad and a very, very fine compound. So again, I'll go over it pretty well the same way as anything else, except this product you need to use wet, so I'll be spraying a bit of water just on the, the area where I'm polishing. But other than that, no different. Okay, so she's all cleaned up now. So the only real thing left to do is clean up my mess. So I'm just going to bring her over to clean up bay. And uh, I'm not going to really wash the paint, but wash all the, all the windows and any trim pieces. Uh, the inside of the door jams usually get a bit of compound in them too. I find uh, hot water is a good, uh, good way to remove most of it. Pressure washer is going to help me out a bit too, so I'll get on with that and we'll be back in a sec. Okay, so this is pretty well the final result. I'm just running out of sun right now. We've got a tiny bit of uh, cleanup to do yet, but give you an idea what the finish looks like now. 